you know, when the people who come to the events might want to do things to get involved in that way, you can just connect with the chapter. You know, you can put your, your energy into it and, you know, maybe plan an, an advocacy event. There's a lot of different things going on in Tucson where you can show up, maybe. I'm curious, is there a way of, like, um, taking, this is personal, <laughs> the, um, the terminology activism out of, I mean, I, you know, I understand the viability of the term. Well, I mean, it serves a purpose. I've heard the same but thing. But you know how people get repulsed? The government, government I've heard the, the, I've heard the, the same government. exact reaction to the term sustainability. Yeah. And to a certain extent, you want to be able to talk to people in a way that the majority will understand what you're trying to say. So I understand there's a certain connotation behind the word activism. I mean, you can be grouped in with you know people who bomb abortion clinics. I mean, you can right. you can be grouped yeah. in with that same kind of mentality of, of extreme activism. Um, so. To take the word activism out of what we're doing, though, is to a certain extent, you're taking a word out that can kind of define what you're doing. And I mean, it, it, it's, it's really kind of up to the person who's hearing the word to sure. interpret that into whatever they're going. Yeah. I'm wondering how you can integrate things with that repulsive people and communities and well, parts of the world you know, here also. Oh, activism is being active. You know, being active. I can respect so, yeah. that. Yeah. So then that's the root of the word. So what we mean by that is, uh, you know, presenting what sure. these these ideas to the public. I just wonder how to make it friendly, you know, like accessible. There's a technique the mind, I'd like to yeah. share um, that I have been studying uh, for a long time now. <coughs> I, I discovered that how we present subjects and issues to people will set the stage for the receptiveness. Mm -hmm. And in order to set a more receptive stage, there's a man named Marshall Rosenberg who, is, who has workshops on nonviolent communication. And, and you know, if you can remember this name, you know, write it down somewhere, but Marshall Rosenberg is, he talks about how we can communicate with people, setting up a violent tone thereby maintaining a, a discourse, maintaining that, that flow of information. Because as soon as we begin a violent overtone in any kind of discussion, a lot of times what's happening, what happens is that there's an unconscious shutdown by people who, you know, are not necessarily aware that it's violent, but the words in and of themselves have that, that resonance. And when we can learn to resonate a non-violent message with the same message, that is much more effective in most cases. Another method of, of getting people to begin thinking critically about certain subjects, and rather than convincing them, allow them to convince themselves, and some of you know, I already know about this, is the Socratic method. And what the Socratic method does is it, it asks the questions that will guide the person to the answers that they're looking for. It isn't necessarily a, a, a trick of getting them to answer a question in favor of what you're trying to explain. Rather, it's a way to communicate and, and have an opportunity for both parties to actually learn and discover truths. <clears throat> so when we're asking questions, we, we don't go in with the intent of convincing. We go in with the intent of discovery. Right. More often than not, if we follow that trail, we'll begin to answer our own questions and create our own solutions from that. Because you know, any person that walks up to you thinking they have all the answers automatically has limited themselves. Because the, the answers are not there, as, as we approach utopia, we can always get closer, but will we ever reach it? Well, like Jacques Fresco says, you know, we're always improving. Right, it's emerging. It's always, always, it's always emerging. So when somebody says, oh, you, you want utopia, I look at them and I go, define utopia. You know, and I think that's the key. If we can get people to begin defining their terms, staying in context, we can continue a communication level that will allow us to understand each other rather than, you know, get to the point where, uh, no, I don't agree with you. 
even though they're both saying the exact same thing. So what is it that everybody wants? We all want to live in peace, pursue happiness, and be unobstructed and un unharassed. That's not the case today. It also seems, um, I personally had this experience that came to me back in the East Coast. I had never done anything. Um, I was found myself in a fundraising group, and the first family was, oh, well, we got to put the fun back in fundraising, because this seems like a place I do not want to be. But it's like, no, we're going to do that. And it seemed like uh, the feeling is, is like, what is it that inspires the souls of individuals or on so massive level, you know, because if we're working, we're all in communities one way or another, we live together, we ride the bus or traffic lights together. Um, you know, what is it that keeps our time spent here, you know, um, invigorated since our time is precious and that if it becomes a part of the process, you know, um, it's just something I'm observing, I'm wondering, you know. I want to add something about that. Uh, Does that make sense? I'm sorry. That's just a personal projection that yeah. came to me, but I'm just curious. Um, you know, we're, 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 we're all one, and we're all connected in our interconnectedness. And basically, we all have the same human needs, you know. And so that's, our, that's what we share in common. And when we... You know, people who are involved in the movement are volunteers, and they spend their time, their free time, you know, volunteering, and because we, we want a better world, basically. So I think that that's what kind of the, the message and the common bond that keeps us going and keeps us motivated to do this. Inspiration. Mm -hmm. And then also, I guess, I guess like you said, it's individual, but to me it seems like how you integrate with your community and sharing. You know, lovely, that beautiful image, and like, what does that mean? You know, like, yeah. so that it feels good as opposed to, you know, like you said, people trying. We're always trying to tell each other something, so we don't realize that. Oh my God, my mom told me I have to be the smartest. You know, it was like, and we got to be no dolls, but like, how it is we get to level to know what it is. Yes, well, the awareness that a lot of us gain, and the way we change, and within the movement is. Knowing, you know, accepting that we don't know, you know, we just like we, and to be able to say it, we don't know, <laughs> you know, I don't know, um, don't have all the answers, and then also ask questions instead of just telling people, ask them because, you know, to each individual these terms are subjective. So, you know, when somebody says a certain term, you kind of like to find out what they mean by that term. And then you can understand, then you can better answer the question or direct it, you know, the answer. Because we have a, a lot of different interpretations for the same thing, I guess. So. I have a question. Uh huh. So, with my family, we are really trying to move closer towards a more sustainable, independent living style. But what I have found is that without knowing who to get in touch with, our resources are completely limited to what we can purchase. Is there a network of people out there where you can go to to say, look, I'm trying to build this new planter bed in my backyard, but I don't want to buy the materials. What do you guys have you know, in, in terms of getting away from that monetary dependency? There's a, there's a movement there? uh, occurring right now in Tucson, and it's happening all over the United States, and I'm, I'm quite involved with this, and I'm glad you asked this question. It's a great question. People are looking for resources because monetarily, more and more people are being affected by the economy. They're, they're getting less money because prices are going up, the value of money, blah, 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 blah. Well, there are, there are things online, especially on Facebook, called time traders. There's the really, really free market. There are um, Tucson uh, for sale and uh, gifting uh, uh, sites. Free All, cycle. Yeah, free cycle. 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 Free cycle.
So what's happening is, this is really trending right now, is that people are going online, sharing things that they have, and saying, uh, I've got this, anybody want this? I, like for myself, I, I put on Craigslist the other day, and I haven't followed up on it, so I'm just so caught up in this no excuse. But I said, hey, look, I got a refrigerator. It works. I want to trade it for a washing machine. Somebody did reply, but it was just too late. But I can do that again. If I really wanted a washing machine, all I got to do is put it to the universe. Folks, we're living in a time right now where we can talk to somebody in China within a split second of deciding we want to talk to somebody in China without having to pay long distance fees, right? Because we're already connected. Because of this connection, when we begin to learn how to sit symbiotically relate to all those other people and get past that Ludditism, you know, that, that fear of going online, which I think a lot of us probably already done. What we can do is not just, you know, fr be frustrated over not being able to find something, but learn how to find things. Learn the words we need to use to find specific items. Like, for example, do you ever have a problem finding an answer on Google? Somebody's like, oh, I can't, I can't find it on Google. Somebody comes up and just changes a word. And there it is, you know? So if we learn how to ask the questions, so like you did, where do I find these resources? Well, guess what? Even better news. With the Keshi Foundation, the underground movements going on around the world right now, Indonesia signing over, actually the president of Indonesia signing all these, these uh, $2 bills that are actually backed by gold and silver and platinum and all the precious metals. There is a movement right now to repay the entire world. Anybody here ever heard of the Jubilee? Yeah. Okay. It's a Hebrew tradition where every 50 years all debts are forgiven. They were doing this already, you know, because they understood that that monetary economy is an infinite economy. It has to be. It has to be segmented. Otherwise, it goes into oblivion. You know. And um, if you're interested in that, I would just say put it out to the community. I I'm a life coach and hypnotherapist and holistic nutrition coach, and I offer my services as a gift economy model, which means I don't really the money isn't discussed. You know, I I base it on trust and fairness. So I I'm trusting that someone will support me. They'll say I trust you to coach me, and I'm saying I trust you to support me in return. So I have it out there. I have it on my business card. Whatever you do, maybe there's something that you do, and you can put it out there in the community. Then you can also talk to your friends, and you can also talk to other people in the community. You belong to a church, whatever social organizations you belong to. You know, gather your friends together and see if you can kind of start something yourself, even. I mean, basically, um, you have the power to do it. And like you were saying, um, you recycle our sites. Pictures on Facebook about uh, a shed you were building. Yes. Yeah. That, that, that relates really well to what yeah. she asked. I, I, you know, I let it out to the public what I'm doing for free. We're building a shed out of pallets, basically. We're building a shed for free. <laughs> so we're showing people uh, the, the steps involved, you know, from everything that we're, you know, each step of the way. We're showing people, oh, if they want to do it, they can do it too. And we're, you know, we're really, um, you know, got our hearts set on not spending money. So we've spent money on nails and we've spent money on screws. But it takes a lot more time because you're working with what you've got. You've got pallets and it's inferior wood. So you're piecing things together, you know, and it just is, it's a common knowledge. So we're showing the joinery. There's Japanese joinery in my son's museum to be able to piece the wood together because we're not going to buy two by fours. <laughs> you know, we refuse to go buy two by fours. So it's just, you know. How far have you gotten? Yeah, we're, we're really good right now. We've got completely, we've got three walls up and, and it's solid all the way around. And all of it's been for free. And we go get these pallets in this one <coughs> industrial area and they love us there. They even set them out for us now because, you know, some people do go pick those up and sell them. 
but we're building something with it. So they're really, they really like that. I'm collecting pellets too. Are you? I'm trying to build for free, if I can, the infrastructure to plant a whole bunch of moringa in my backyard. Uh, have you discovered yeah. what moringa and is? And it's not my favorite. <laughs> Yeah. That's the whole. That's the whole point. We we have we have a planet full of waste. Yeah. Even in Africa, the children will go to the landfills and scavenge the Mac computers that are dumped in piles of the mountains of Macs. And, and you know, I don't think a lot of people know about this, but you know, this is how we do it. Yeah, and sharing information, and it's actually it's so accessible because if you want to know how, then you can find out. I feel it also. Um, did you know? I, I have this impulsive desire because it's my own personal issue. It is about how to, um, to break free the old foundations into the new foundations if it's in support circles and discussing. Of course, what you're doing, like my folks give me money while I'm you know, divorcing and just trying to get on my feet. I'm in debt now. I don't mind giving up debt to the government. But giving it up to family who's from old ways, old thinking, bless their hearts, right? Because they help people, right? They're helping their daughter. Like how it is that we free up our energy, you know, to be able to um, make the break into, and you know, have more, uh, I'm sort of more of a spiritual than I feel like the foundations, you know, to get started, how we speak of the foundation of confidence and heart and mutual support. But it's like there's all these unfortunate complications, you know, if it's whatever invested in my own business or the families. Um, uh, how I guess what I'm putting out there is since you know, you're representing the Tucson community or our region, how it is that you know there's um, circles of foundational support. I, I would say the first step. I mean, of course, we begins with it. Wanting to do a lot of work, right? But 
it's like the more I learn about this stuff, the more things change, like by reading books and doing all these things and, uh, you know, investigating different ideas, trying to read books about things that I don't agree with, too. Anyways, by a new understanding coming about, it's really hard for me to compete in this market. Like, I just had this, I just had this, uh, you know, art show uh, two nights ago, and I go to this art show, and all these people come up to me, and they're making all these comments about, yeah, we should try and really sell your painting because it's so good, and it's like, I don't want to hear about that anymore. I'm so <laughs> sick of it. Like, about everything being, like, narrowed down to, like, that, that is the thing to hold up. It's yeah. a dollar amount, and that's success, and it's like, I don't, it's hard for me to continue, and I notice my habits in other areas change. Like, I don't feel the need to, I, don't, I just don't want to like, be my own slave driver like cranking out work because I started realizing that's part of the like factory, factory mentality and stuff. When I didn't used to know that, well, I would confuse it with uh, you know, passion and stuff. You know? and so all I'm saying is by learning, which is really what the Zeitgeist movement is about, is to try to learn as much as you can and communicate the, what you learn with other people. But, the more you learn, like, the more things start to change in your own life, like, um, and some of it's inconvenient, like, uh, I, a lot of times I don't have the money to get something I want, because I don't feel this drive anymore to go uh, hustle work, like, because I've done art and all through my adult life construction at the same time to supplement it, but I used to have to go hustle and hunt for jobs, and, um, you know, because that's what you're supposed to do, and if you don't do that, and what kind of person I am. And I just don't feel the drive. You know? And my life has started to take a turn where I actually live in a building where I do maintenance on the other rooms for my rent. I don't pay rent. Um, the landlord has a truck, and like once a week I drive to the supermarket. You know, and I sell an occasional painting, but and it's not like really, really I on purpose planned it that way. It's just I mean, I don't know. It could be coincidence that I live like that, and but really, that's that's how a resource-based economy could be. You have what you need when you need it. When you don't like, when you're not using that thing, it's available to other people. Some things you might want to have all the time, like, like my tablet. I really like it. I'd like to have it all the time. I don't want to share it with people, but a lot of things you can share. <coughs> the society can be developed to, to work with. Yeah, and and I know that. In London, I think it is. There's a, you know, I think within the movement, they did start a sharing uh, library, like you know, we go of tools and, you know, just like, what do you want to do in your community here in Tucson? Would you like to set, somebody want to donate a building, maybe, or a space where you could set up some kind of a sharing library where you wouldn't have to pay for a rate, but you could go check like a library, right? Mm -hmm. You know, whatever you need instead of buying it. You know, go borrow it and then take it back. Yeah, I think we're going so, to move from yeah, a, an ownership to society it. to a stewardship society. Yeah. And even biblically speaking, that's what most religions teach. Sadly, the, the duality exists and the hypocrisy is rampant because you find that most people do not practice what they're preached. And because of that, we live in that duality. In fact, I, I talked to the uh, deputy chief of police in Los Angeles during the Occupy movement uh, when they were arresting uh, the activists for climbing the fence in City Hall. And I asked him, I said, who owns City Hall? He goes, well, it's chartered. Who owns the charter? See, this is the Socratic method. And he said, well, the people own the charter. I said, well, are these the people? Are these the citizens as well? Why are you arresting the very people who own this property? And then he started in with this. And this is exactly why cops and the military and politicians do what they do. Because they are entrained in the duality. It's exact words. Just before the... the uh, TV reporter from Telemundo came up to him and saved him and gave him a hug. He said, well, we live in a duality. Mm -hmm. Enough said. Therefore, we are in a world where people 
accept the dichotomy. They live within the cognitive dissonance of knowing it's bad, but continuing the, the behavior. Because the duality is accepted. Then I look at it and I say, well, how's your health? That's the only question I have for anybody who wants to live in duality. Because the duality creates conflict issues within our bodies. Anybody who isn't grounded, balanced, and looking at life, understanding the duality, and forgiving oneself for that duality, has to deal with that conflict issue. So here I'm, I'm, I'm here to say, forgive yourself. That seems to be the question also. Forgive me, I have space, so anybody can interrupt me at any time. But um, it seems like to get to this point, to even know that we might like a Zeitgeist moment, movement that first there's the suffering, that we come into this world, you know, if it's agreed, you know, there's so different perspectives on that, but we suffer, and sometimes, I mean, you don't go through the motivation of being able to intelligently speak and be motivated and want to go this far to spend your time on together without going through some degree of learning the duality, or whatever be it, the suffering. And then the question is, it's like, how it is that we deal in that? Like, are we, is it about fixing it into the, you know, utopia? This is, you know, just, just putting it on the table. I think that we're, we're, in order to get to that point where we begin the fixing process, we have to be able to get out of the apathy that's created by the duality. Because when we have the duality, when we're, when we're having this cognitive dissonance, a couple things happen in our physiology, right? The conflict issues create literally biochemical responses that begin to damage <coughs> the human body. What do we do when we have this conflict issue? Some of us drink, some of us can be depressed, some of us overeat, some of us just do stupid things, you know, behave emotionally. But once we learn to step back as the observer, look at that duality, first thing, forgive ourselves. Because without that forgiveness, we remain in the anger of the resentment. We have to forgive ourselves knowing that we are mitigating this duality every day by thinking of the things we need to do to make that change. It's okay. Then we can begin to heal. Then we begin to get motivated. Then we get past the duality and we say, okay, I totally dig this. I mean, I know I want to get in the car and I'm going to breathe fucking carbon monoxide all day long. I don't want to do that. Can I interrupt you right there? One of the big questions is 